What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a look at the long-awaited Kurosun Ninja Speed Pad. This is something that's pretty unique from anything else that I've used out there on the market and it has incredibly premium build quality. But is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse pad for you? Let's check it out. All right, guys, and before we get started today, I do want to let you know that Cruel Sun did send this mouse pad out to me. However, with that being said, they didn't tell me anything to say. So everything you see in this video today is going to be my truthful, honest thoughts and my own words. This arrived to my front door packed very well, a box within a box. And on the back of the packaging, as you can see here, we have a nice image of their logo. And as you open this up inside of this box, it actually does come with a sleeve. And on the front of the sleeve, as you can see, they have this really cool looking ninja graphic. I really love the detail here and I appreciate how it does come with a sleeve. So here is the actual mouse pad itself. And I wanna say once I took this out of the box, I really was impressed which is how incredibly premium and great the quality actually feels on this. And included in the packaging, it did come with this welcome envelope here. At the top, looks like we have this really cool sticker. They provide you with a welcoming card, inviting you to follow them on their socials. And then it also comes with this quick start placement guide. And on the back, they provide you with the proper care instructions on how to properly clean it. This graphic on here of the Ninja looks incredible. It's incredibly sharp. It's not fuzzy or anything like that. You don't feel this graphic sticking up on the surface or adding any type of a different dynamic to it. It feels like it's one with the pad. They do have their logo down here in the bottom right corner. It does kind of stick up off the pad itself, but I didn't have any issues when I was using it or testing it out to where I noticed it bothered me or became an issue. This is using an alpha cell base. And I want to say that this thing is incredibly sticky. Even just when I lay my hands on here, I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but even my hands, just placing my hands on top of this base, they're actually sticking to it. And once I seated this thing to my desk, I never had any issues with it moving around with me or going anywhere. If you did need to make adjustments to your mouse pad, you just lift up the corners and it does move around pretty easily. But then again, once you lay it flat, it's not gonna budge on you. I really enjoy how they stuck to the white and black theme all the way around the pad and the stitching on this thing. It looks really great in the white colorway, it pops. It looks like something different and unique and the quality on this stitching is incredible. It feels really soft and premium and the stitching might slightly stick up a bit more than the surface itself, but it is really close and it never once bothered me or got in the way and I never noticed it even being there the entire time that I've been using this pad. The dimensions are coming in at 490 millimeters in width 420 millimeters in height, and it sits at three millimeters in thickness. The filling on the base for me has been very consistent, though it is slightly plush and you can push into it a little bit. I would say it's a bit more of a firmer filling, but it does feel very consistent. And the surface is what makes this really unique. When I first got this out of the box and started using it, I almost felt like it felt kind of similar to like one of the laminated surfaces on something like the Fanatic Jet. So it does have that smoother type of a feeling to it. You don't feel any type of texture or any abrasiveness sticking up off of this. And the thing that makes this surface so unique is it's a tightly woven surface that is heat treated. And it's so smooth that it was really comfortable on my skin and I never had any issues where it was bothering my arm moving around on it. And the characteristics that this thing offers, as you can see here, it has a really smooth and fast glide along the surface. And as you are making micro adjustments and doing really tiny movements back and forth, it is very smooth, but at the same time, it does have a bit of control there. And it never got to the point where it ever felt like this was too quick or too slippery. And when pairing the surface with the alpha cell base, the one really cool characteristic that I found about this mouse pad is even though it's really quick and it can give you a smooth glide, once you really start pushing into this thing, it does offer you a lot more control. And out of all the speed pads that I have, this thing has actually really good stopping power. And before we do jump into the test results today, I wanted to put out a really quick disclaimer for you guys. It has been incredibly hot and humid where I live. It's been over 100 degrees Fahrenheit every single day. I do recommend whenever picking up a new mouse pad to try different skates if you do have the capability and the option to do so. Because one thing I found kind of interesting is these Lamsu skates, for example, if I had these smaller corner skates as opposed to the bigger skates, overall I just feel like the bigger skates just have a quicker glide. They glide a little bit smoother and I feel like they have a little bit less initial static friction when you're getting down and making the micro adjustments. 
So when playing around with different types of mice, like the Vaxi, the Razor Skates actually worked really well on here, the stock Razor Skates, and even the stock Pulsar Skates, I felt to be working really good on here as well. Again, if it just has these joint feet, for whatever reason, I just felt like the glide was just a little bit more smooth, a little bit more consistent, and I had a little bit less initial static friction. The PTFE skates have been feeling a little bit faster than the glass and the sapphire skates on top of this pad. And another example is on various different types of dot skates. These are the Lamzu dot skates. And then these are just some cheaper, kind of like harder style dot skates. I feel like the softer skates on the Lamzu are a lot quicker. And for whatever reason, these cheaper, harder style skates, they were just a little sticky on top of the surface. And one last final example is on the VGN Dragonfly. I did pick up these ESP Tiger skates right here. And these have been some of my best performers. And I feel like they really, truly glide perfectly on this thing. So that's why I always recommend trying out different skates depending on the type of pad you're using. And I do feel like these fuller types of skates have absolutely been my favorite and the best performers when using the Surface. And when it comes to comparing the Ninja Speed Pad to my other favorite Speed Pad offerings on the market, let's start out with the Lamzu Energon. Both of these pads have a pretty similar performance, though both of these pads do have some similarities to me, to whereas with the Lamzu Energon, you do have a quick glide, but you also get great stopping power. When coming over to the Ninja Speed Pad, the Ninja Speed Pad does have a bit of a quicker glide. It does have a little less initial friction, but one of the reasons it does remind me of the Lamzu Energon is is the Lambs Energon is a speed pad, but it has pretty great stopping power and control the more that you actually push into it. And I do feel like there is very similar characteristics on the Ninja speed pad. Again, very quick glide, very low initial friction. Once you actually start pushing into the pad, it does give you a bit more control and it does help give you some additional stopping power as well. So the overall comparison between these two, I'd say the Ninja Speed Pad has a little less initial friction, has a faster glide, and it has a little bit less control and a little bit less stopping power. So next we have one of the most popular speed pads of all time. This is the Artisan FX Raiden in Xsoft. The glide you get between these two pads, it's very fast and very consistent. I would say that overall, I feel like the Artisan Raiden is a little bit faster, but at the same time, I feel like the Raiden offers less stopping power. When you are making the micro adjustments on the Raiden and then come over to the Ninja Speed Pad, you do feel a little bit more control there. And as I glide across both of these pads, when I'm pushing into the Raiden and when I push into the Ninja, I feel like pushing into the Ninja has more of an effect. The Ninja does have a little bit slower speed, a little bit more control and greater stopping power over the Artisan Raiden in the Xsoft. All right guys, so that wraps things up on the Kurosun Ninja Speed Pad. This is coming in at $49, and for the quality that you're getting, I feel like the pricing point is phenomenal. I've been in contact with Kurosun, and they're so incredible to talk to because they're so incredibly passionate about what they're doing, and it truly shows in the final result of their product. If you are a fan of speed pads and you feel like some of the results I demonstrated to you today are something that you are looking for, then I would absolutely recommend going and checking this thing out. This has been one of my favorite pads of the year and I'm really excited to see where this company is gonna go in the future. All right guys, so if you have any questions or feel like there's anything I left out, please let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, if you have enjoyed watching this video and you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.